Rural Heritage on RFD TV is brought to you by Rural Heritage Magazine, a bi monthly magazine featuring articles about farming and logging with draft animal power, small scale diversified family farming and homesteading, and other aspects of our rich rural heritage. Rural Heritage Magazine, borrowing from yesterday to do the work of today. For subscription information, please call 319 362 3027 or order online at www.ruralheritage.com. So uh, I started with horses as young as I can remember. And my idol's always been my father, who's always had draft horses. I did start with riding horses and different things and really grew to like draft horses. And we raised Pertrams for a long time. When I met my wife and I have two small kids, she wasn't, she was not familiar with horses as much as I was. So the height and sheer size of draft horses scared her. So I look, was always looking for a pair of something smaller, but was more all purpose. I still like to ride and I definitely want to take over dad's footsteps and, and farm. So we did, did some research and I was almost stuck on halflingers for a while and uh, looked and looked and looked, but didn't always find anything that was perfect for us. So dad mentioned to me the one day, look up the breed suffix. They're a really good breed. And so I started doing some research on them and uh, really found they'd be a good fit for us. They're not overly huge, but they're not overly small. They're very powerful and uh, versatile, which is exactly what we're looking for. So dad has a, a good friend, Levada and Chris Pidcock, who we um, started you know, talking with and really became to know. And they had these two full sisters. So we went down and seen them and I purchased them in January. My full-time job currently, I, I'm the chief of EMS at a local uh, ambulance district here in town. And my wife and I both are registered nurses in local emergency rooms. So right now your schedule is um, uh, pretty full. Correct. Yeah, it's a, it's a full-time job just working off the farm. And then when we're here, you know, it's a full-time job also. We have two small children, four and six, who are very involved with the farm. Um, so hopefully we'll continue that tradition that I was passed down to. I can pass that down to my kids. So we... Um, my wife and I, when we first met, we had our first small farm and, um, we, we built a little house. We had a, bought a little house, uh, just south of town with about two acres. And my dream was always to have my own place, my own barn and my own things. So when we started looking at, at places to move and start a family, um, we stumbled across this piece of property. And so we built on the far end of the farm so that we're all still connected, but we still have our own little piece of paradise. Kind of best of both worlds. Correct. Fairly recently um, became a licensed nurse, is that right? That's correct. 2018, I finished schooling. Um, I graduated from Kent State in 2018, and I've been in the emergency room since. Um, why did you choose that career path? Well, growing up, I actually went to a tech school for carpentry. And in my senior year, I decided I, I didn't want to drive back and forth. It was about an hour commute from a lot of um, unionized places. So I decided I didn't want to be gone that much and stumbled across EMS. And so I took a class right out of high school and uh, decided I kind of liked it. So from there, um, I've stayed at the, my current job now as part-time and just kind of advanced from there. And so going down the road, I thought, you know, I'd really like to see the other side of emergency medical services. So I decided to go back to school and become a nurse. So I'm dual certified and I keep both of them. And uh, it's, it's different in both worlds. Both sides are very different, but uh, both very rewarding. And I'm sure that experience on both sides helps you on the other side. That's correct, yes. Got to. Um, where is the hospital? So the hospital is about 13 miles from here. 
uh, north called Ashtabula County Medical Center. So it's a regional hospital? Correct. Is it doing okay? Yes, it's doing Good. great. Good. Striving. Good. Um, and your EMS calls, are they mostly small town, rural? Um, yeah, most small town rural. We do have one nursing home uh, located in our district that we do run to, a couple doctor's offices, but mostly is uh, rural calls of, of a mixed um, statue, whether it's medical, trauma, car accidents. We, we definitely get our mix of, of a lot of different calls. It's got to be stressful. It is stressful, but I'm able to unwind, and these are my stress relievers bad day or having a bad day and come to the barn and mess with the horses and it's kind of eases you right away. What do you like about the Suffolks? I like that uh, how calm they are. I was very surprised when we first picked up these two girls. You know, they were a little, little nervous because of course they didn't know us. There was a lot going on and um, we got them home. You know, they were a little hesitant to come in the barn. This one was kind of running in the pasture with just a uh, like a collar on and she had a friend which was a donkey there um, and she was raised by an older gentleman off off of their farm for a short time and um, just how calm they were even not even ever seeing a trailer they walked up they sniffed it and they both got right on it was not a big deal um, once we came home and I let them settle in for a little bit the first thing I did was grab the clippers and our clippers are pretty large they're loud and I made sure they were in their stalls they felt safe secure and I just slowly eased at them you know rub them rub the clippers all over and they both accepted it very well they're very very easy to deal with not jumpy um, when they learn something it's not a big deal the next time uh, very very impressed with with that and how quick they are to learn I put her collar on about the second week that I had her and then started throwing the harness on. And that's one thing that I've never done is be very hesitant. So if I'm going to do something with them, I just do it. Talking to them, you know, keeping calm tone with them. They trust me and uh, they've, they've really worked out very well. She, I've had both of them for about six months. The youngest one has had a, a harness on twice and I've just been leading her around just to see new things. Um, and Belle has now been driving in a, in a four cart single. She's been hitched with dad's team a couple times for, for a double on the wagon. I have a small pulling sled that I just used for a trainer down through the driveway I try to make as much noise as possible we walk up and stand by the road so it's very important to expose them to a lot of things i want to make sure that when they're here nothing startles them having young kids they need to be broke the best they've settled down excellent i mean my daughter is she's four and she i could probably let her lead her you know they're always out feeding them apples and things like that so they've really done very well I've been around horses for a long time and just repetitiveness with them, exposure to all new things. She had a fit the one day because we walked past a vehicle, she saw her shadow in the reflection off the car. So we stopped, walked up to it, let her sniff it, uh, open and shut the doors and just really expose them all around to anything that they, they seem hesitant about and it just makes them a better horse moving on. Uh, all growing up, I remember starting in this farm in 1992, I was six years old, and uh, one of the front pages of the newspaper, I was in first grade, I was walking behind, his, he was uh, just walking with a walking plow, plowing the far field uh, when we first started the farm, and since then, it's always been, you know, dad and I with, with the horses, so all implements that we've learned on uh, things I've learned is to be patient to let them work for you you know don't get after them if they're not doing something right but more show them and just be a good horseman as far as being calm being patient and um, really learning different things about horse drawn equipment versus tractor drawn equipment and it is a slower way of life but it's it's fun um, for me, it's a stress reliever, and if it takes six days to plow a small garden, then so be it.
So her halter's a little big. Is she going to grow into that? Yeah, it's a brand new one. The other one was too snug, so yeah. I don't leave the halters on when they're in the barn sure. normally or outside, so. Is it important to you to have a registered horse? Not necessarily, but our whole goal is to promote this breed, being that they're endangered. And so our goal and my goal is to start with good registered stock and kind of, you know, fan out from there. So if we can produce good registered horses, it's only going to prove that they're they are a full breed, and that breed can hopefully strive one day because I know the last couple years there's only been about 50 or 60 registered per year. So it's a, it's a very uh, good breed, but not a whole lot around. Hi, I'm Joe Mishka of Rural Heritage Magazine. I'm on location of one of the many events we cover that celebrates our rural heritage. If you enjoy our show, check out our magazine where you'll learn more about the people that blend the past with what works today. You can save almost 20% off the newsstand price by subscribing at ruralheritage.com or chat with us at 877-647-2452. That's toll free, 877-647-2452. And uh, farm, farm raised feeds. I think we're gonna do all the power requirements to the farm and do it on less feed. Now, it could be argued that my big perchins could move more than these smaller suffolks. I can't disagree with that yet, but we haven't put them on a load that it mattered. And my goal is if I need more horsepower, we have it. So I would rather add a horse than to breed for a, a bigger size. Um, I'm really enjoying the compactness that harnessing is. It's a joy again. And I'm, I mean, I'm not a small man, but when my big horses put their, I couldn't reach, even on my tiptoes. These guys, it's all together different. Well, it's been kind of exciting here at Riceland Meadows. We changed from, after 30 years of working and using Percheron horses, I changed to the Suffolk breed. And I've been extremely happy with what we have. I bought a pair of mares out of Wisconsin, and uh, one of them is actually a half-sister to my son's horse, some more of that Orchard Hill breeding. Um, my, the other mare, we just got her in foal to Orchard Hill Red Blaze for next year. Um, and we have an Ike Sovereign son who will be our stallion prospect. And I'll introduce them all to you. But first, I'd like to introduce a little girl who was born here seven weeks ago. Come on, baby. Come here. Come on up. Get up, lazy. <laughs> get up, lazy. Come on, get up and say hi. Come on. She's terribly excitable. <laughs> Come on. Come on, you. <laughs> we, uh, I started putting a halter on her when she was four days old. I imprinted her at birth, you know, just petting her, touching her, talking to her. And for the first week, she pretty much hated me. I, I had a hard time getting my hands on her, which really surprised me and actually even concerned me a little. But then all of a sudden, the, the, the switch got turned, and she's, now she's this lovable little gal that, <clears throat> come on, baby, get up and show them who you are. Come on. Come on. Come on, get up. I can't believe this. Come on, you. Come on. Come on, get up. Come on, get up. Come on, you. That's it, girl. Come on over here. We've been working on teaching her how to lead. Come on, come over here. I'll brush you off a little bit. Come here. Good girl. You wait here. You wait right here. So we've been working on exposing her to all kind of stuff too, just what Jake was talking about. We start with just the normal stuff, putting fly spray on and touching her all the places that you're going to have to touch when she's an older girl. And um, I have to say she really enjoys this little bit of grooming that she gets every day. She usually even 
quiver her lip at me. So I guess I must be hitting the right spots. Um, I think this is what it takes to make a good workhorse is hands-on at any age. But at this age, it's remarkable. She started to go along with us when we're hitched. And uh, so all the boogeymen she hears, mom's not afraid of, so she's not afraid of. And I think it's, if you can do it, it's a really good practice. Now, I want to quantify that with there are certain jobs I wouldn't want her along, like mowing hay or where things could take a turn in a hurry. And I want to make sure that she's safe and, and everybody's safe, including myself. Being older and slower, I like, I like to have that first advantage anytime I can get it. We do all kind of stuff with this little girl. <laughs> can I have this foot? Can I have this foot? Let me have this foot. I just hold it up until she yields, and then I put it down. We do this a couple times a day. It's just all part of growing up around here. And she gets tied up in a stall for short periods at a time, and she... Well, you saw when we came in, she's laying in her stall, just kind of hanging out. But she's free in here in the afternoon to nurse whenever she wants when we're not working. He's a yearling. He turned one year old on April 22nd, right, Jake? He's a day, no, 23rd, because he's a day younger than Jacob's uh, yearling. And he also uh, came from Pidcocks, but he is an Ike Sovereign son out of Jason Rutledge's big stallion. And... This is a big gangly teenager who I get him kind of fat where well, he's looking pretty good and then he has a growth spurt. So I'm thinking he's going to probably top out in the 17 hand range, but <clears throat> he's a very correct young colt. Uh, even for his big jointed long legs, he still has a good hip. He's exhibiting that Suffolk punch body style and his ribs are springing halfway decent. Um, he's losing his baby fur still, and uh, I couldn't hardly be any more pleased with him. He's got a great mind, especially all those teenage hormones are starting, and just a little correction in my voice is all I've had to use. Um, so again, we hope that he works out to be a, a pretty decent stud. If not, we can make him a gelding, but uh, I think it'd be a waste. He's, he's correct in every way. He's going to be big. He's going to be a big horse. He's going to put power. And it's my hope that by crossing them with these smaller, chunkier mares, we should wind up with a, I don't know, maybe 16 hand or right in there, powerful workhorses. This is Lakeview Abbey. And she is some of Joe Cervanka's breeding. And like I said, she's um, got the Orchard, Orchard Hill breeding about her, too. And you can see it in her thickness. Again, the, the Suffolk punch part. And a great hip. That's, those Orchard Hill horses have this giant powerhouse back here. Um, very eye appealing. And it certainly, she's, they work great. I mean, everything we've had them on so far, I have no complaints. And this is Lakeview Amy. She's, she's 16 hands, just a touch over 16 hands. And she's a little bit beat up because of her honeymoon this last couple weeks, but <clears throat> she's a great horse. And both of both of these, um, like I said, when I got them, I wasn't sure. You know, people say they're broke, but you, your definition and mine may differ. And so I had hitched both of these horses with my geldings first to see how things are going, and uh, it didn't take any time at all. I had them together working on everything. Breed. Um, it's not just about draft horses for me because I've been a draft horse guy for well since the 80s and I looked very hard in 1980s for Suffolk horses and I couldn't find them first and I couldn't find any I could afford there are some out there but you know back then I was making just over four dollars an hour and they probably were about the price they are now which made them my first house was thirty thousand um, dollars so that is my goal is to save these babies, and I, I want people to understand, you know, I, 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 I thought about it a long time, was I going to go with Suffolk or the American Brabant? Both horses have really good minds, and I was kind of leaning toward the American Brabant, 
they have some issues that, that the breed itself is trying to correct. But that didn't, didn't bother me. I like their mind and I like their size. But what turned the, the corner for me was my son. Um, I went and bought that wagon off of uh, Chris Pidcock and he had Suffolk. And it's really the first ones I got to see and handle up close. And um, after we did that, I, I told Jake, I said, you know, Chris has some, you got to call him. So the two of them got together and made their deal. And so when I went with Jake to pick up the babies next door, Hank was for sale. And I kept telling Chris, no, no, no. Well, I got him out and looked at him. And I don't know that you'll find a more correct horse than him. I mean, he has everything going on. I, I can't find much to pick apart on him. Okay, just so that we can be clear on this, you went from having extremely capable, fit, well broke, great team of virgin horses, three. That's correct. Um, that were working super for you. And then within just a few months, without really planning to change over. There was never a plan to change, zero plan. Um, but like I said, Jake wanted a shorter horse, and it, it kind of made sense. And, and for me, being a shorter guy and getting older now, it made even more sense. And I looked at, I mean, I have to face it, the future is of this farm and the horses around here are probably going to be Jake and his children. So in order to make that, why not feed that dream? Um, but I, I'm going to quantify that with, as you said, my black horses, I had a lot of time, a lot of, um, they were great horses. I mean, you, you've seen them on the videos. They were great horses. Um, so we advertised them, and I, I told Con, I said, terrible time to be selling horses. Well, I had mentored a guy through the winter and taught him how to drive horses. I put my horses up for sale, and, and I mentioned to him that, that they were for sale. Well, it turns out he bought them. And so, though I had offers all over the country for them, they wound up about 18 miles away. Uh, I took the Geldings home, used them. I still had Abby. I consigned her for our sale in Dover, and it got canceled due to COVID. So then I was all set to send the paperwork in to con consign her out in Topeka. And the guy who bought my Geldings came in, and he said, Ralph, I like these Geldings so much, I want her. I, I, she, they, these guys just... I am so dumb, and they are so smart that we're getting along terrific. <laughs> and uh, so it turns out Abby went, uh, my black Abby, she went with the gelding. So those three horses are together. They wound up on an organic Jersey dairy. Each one has a big 12 by 12 box stall in a east-facing overhang building. I mean, they have the life of Riley. So a great retirement home for them. And, um, but they're working a little bit each day, hay rides, that kind of stuff, but not heavy farm work. So... They're certainly capable. They were just, the Geldings are 15, Abby was seven. And uh, outstanding horses, no, no complaints. But let me tell you, there was three sleepless nights when we had Hank already, Jake had his mares, and then these two mares became available and they were in Wisconsin in January. Um, and I just, I slept on it three nights and I'm like, I, that, I'm being told this is what we need to do. So we did, not knowing it, their DNA really um, so everything fell into place that by DNA we wound up with this hopefully good breeding program. I did. This program is available for purchase. To order your copy, please call 319-362-3027 or visit www.ruralheritage.com. Rural Heritage is a bi-monthly magazine dedicated to draft animal farming and logging as well as other aspects of our rich rural heritage. It is published by Mishka Press, which also offers a complete line of back-to-the-land books, DVDs, and calendars. Call or write for a catalog or subscription information, or visit our website at www.ruralheritage.com.